The modern age may feature many regions which make up Asia. The history of Middle East, South Asia, and East Asia is what makes up the entire Asian history. The coastline fringe has witnessed some of the greatest civilizations of history. The region had both ethnic and historical consistency. The civilizations share their cultures and ethnicities among themselves through trade. Asian history also saw the birth of some religions which still dominate the world, like Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, and Confucian philosophy. Invaded by nomads and Europeans, the civilizations went through a series of changes in their culture and way of living. European colonies increased their control in the Asian lands, they exploited local disputes, and utilized a technical brink taken on by the Industrial Revolution. European influences stretched dogmatic control, first in the Indian subcontinent, then Southwest and Southeast Asia. The world today witnesses many powerful countries in the Asian belt, China, India, Japan, and Korea being some of the most influencing and dominant. Prehistory The beginning of Neolithic culture has been marked by a 10,000 BCE temple in the southeastern area of Turkey known as Gobekli Tepe and is the oldest place of worship constructed by man. There are no permanent houses in the locality, which clearly states that the site was developed by nomads. Farming communities began to take its roots in northern Africa, northern Mesopotamia, and Antolia by 8500 to 8000 BCE. According to Rakesh Tiwari's reports on Lahuradiwa, India, there are carbon-14 datings, which are from 9000 to 8000 BCE, linked with rice, which make Larahurdewa the earliest site of Neolithic age in whole of South Asia. There are many relics which belong to the prehistoric Jinglonghua and Sichuan culture and Neolithic cultures of Taihuang Mountains, which have been found near the Yishan in Hebi province of China, at the Baifudi site, and date back to 8000 to 7000 BCE. The area of excavation is more than 1200 square meters and consists of Neolithic excavations of two different phases. Created on dryland agriculture, the Halafian culture was born in 5500 BCE in the areas of Palestine, Levant, Anatolia, Syria, Lebanon, and northern Mesopotamia. The southern part of Mesopotamia witnessed less rains and required irrigation system. Ubaid culture thrived on the plains of Elam and Sumer from 5500 BCE. Bronze Age In 4500 BCE, the Copper Age, or Chalolithic, started after which began Bronze Age 3500 BCE, swapping the Neolithic ethos. Centered in the western region of Indian subcontinent, the Indus Valley Civilization flourished during the 3300 to 1300 BCE. The Indus Civilization is considered to be one of the world's most early forms of Hinduism. Harappa and Mohenjo-daro were the main cities of this civilization and had the most intelligently planned cities, art, and culture. The cause of destruction of these civilizations is still under debate. There are various points being put through, natural disasters like floods, and Indo-European invasions. These invaders have been denoted to as Aryan, who dominated the Vedic period, which was also created by them, and the age lasted from 1500 to 500 BCE. Language of Sanskrit was developed at this time, and the famous Vedas were written. There were tales, hymns, and epics written about the Aryan gods and the wars they undertook. The Aryan religion sophisticated the religion on Hinduism, and developed the caste system, which comprised of the Varnas, and had more major classes, Brahmins, Kshatriya, Vyas, and Shudra. The Brahmins were the most respected, whereas the Shudras were the untouchables, had lowly jobs, and were not allowed into the temples. The metalworking areas were mainly Vietnam and China. The first bronze drums, which belonged to the Neolithic age, have been discovered around the Red River Delta sections of southern China and Vietnam. 
Their drums are known as Dong Son drums and are linked to the culture of Dong Son of Vietnam. Bronze artifacts, dating back to 2100 BCE, have also been uncovered in the Southeast Asia, Ban Chang, Thailand. More bronze tools with artifacts of stone and ceramic have been excavated in Yangon in Burma. The date of the tools and artifacts are not exact, but can be broadly said to be between 3500 to 500 BCE. Iron Age Occurring immediately after Bronze Age, Iron Age has been marked by the widespread use of iron, armor and weapons all over the main empires of Asia. The earliest production of iron took place in 1200 BC in Anatolia. There are evidences which point to dates which are earlier than this also. The use of iron also accorded to other changes in the societies of the civilizations, like artistic styles, agricultural practice, religious beliefs, etc. In the history of archaeology, the literature of the Iron Age consists of the most primitive texts preserved in manuscript tradition. Chinese and Sanskrit were the most renowned literatures, and some of the important noted texts include Vedas, Avestan Gathas, and Old Hebrew Bible. The main characteristic which separates the iron from the other ages before it is the introduction of alphabetic characters and the consequential growth of written linguistic, which permitted literature and historic record. Middle East Cyrus the Great founded the Archimenid Empire of the Persian Empire. He ruled the territory from Turkey and Greece to the Indus River and Central Asia during the period of 6th and 4th centuries BCE. The Persians had many important substructures, growths, a central government, and were also tolerant to other cultures. In the rule of Darius the Great, the terrains were united, an administration was developed, aristocrats were allocated martial positions, taxation was prudently planned, and spies were used to certify the allegiance of provincial officials. The main religion of Persia during this period was Zoroastrianism, founded by the philosopher Zoaster or Zarathustra, the religion familiarized with monotheism in Persia. The faith forbid the use of intoxicants in religious ceremonies and animal sacrifice and introduced the thought of divine redemption through individual ethical act, both an end of days, both general and particular judgment with a hell and heaven. The concept greatly impacted the masses and the emperors, Zoroastrianism set base for religions like Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. The Persian emperors succeeded in instituting harmony and stability in Middle East and were a great inspiration in politics, religion, and art. They were subjugated by Alexander the Great in the 4th century BCE, but the conqueror was unable to have a stable empire, and once he died Persia scattered into small dynasties, one of which was the Seleucid Empire, trailed by Parthenian Empire. Persia united once again by the end of the Classical Age into Sassanid Empire, which is also referred to as the Persian Empire. The Parthian, Sassanid, and Seleucid Empires controlled Western Asia for hundreds of years, while the Romans took control of the Western Asia. India India saw the Golden Age under the rules of Maurya and Gupta empires. It was an age which saw progress in the fields of religions, art, science, technology, philosophy, all of which candied the rudiments which is known as Indian culture. Buddhism and Hinduism were important religions which greatly impacted East, South, and Southeast Asia. India was divided into 16 regional states in 600 BCE, which constantly battled among themselves. With his vision of conquering the world, Alexander the Great came to India in 327 BCE. He succeeded in crossing the northwestern part of India, and also created a province known as Bactria. But his army did not move further, as they were afraid of the Indian soldiers. The Mauryan Empire was founded by Chandragupta Maurya, who began his conquests by first taking control of the Ganges River. His empire was the most powerful and vast in the history of ancient India. His dynasty lasted from 321 to 185 BCE. 
His empire ranged from modern Assam in the east, Himalayas in the north, and beyond Pakistan in west, also seizing much of Afghanistan and Balochistan. It was the first time that India was united under the rule of Chandragupta. According to Chandragupta, the government established was to be managed by one king whose trusted army was to proclaim his power. It exercised bureaucratic rule and had a postal service. Chandragupta's grandson, Ashok, expanded his empire by conquering whole of India except the southern tip. Ashok later found peace in Buddhism and led a non-violent life where he encouraged religion and other humanitarian ways all over India. After the death of Ashok, the empire was seized by the Kushans, who established the Kushan rule in India. The empire of the Kushans brought about a radical chaos when it disintegrated in 220 CE. In 320, Maharaja Sri Gupta founded the Gupta Empire, which covered most of the Indian subcontinent. The Gupta kings strategically united the regions by marriage and negotiation. Although the area covered by the Guptas was less in comparison to the Maras, but the Guptas had much stability in their empire. Guptas were thrown by the Huns in 535. Classical China Zhu Dynasty The Zhu Dynasty ruled over China from 1029 BCE and continued their rule until 258 BCE. They distributed the powers to the native nobility and depended on their allegiance to regulate their large terrain. This was much of a feudal system of rule. Because of this system, the Chinese administration was dispersed and weedy, and the emperor could hardly solve any national problems. The forming of Mandate of Heaven helped the emperor to hold his position. The Mandate of Heaven meant that the emperor was chosen divinely to rule, and it was not necessary for the emperor to be of noble birth or blood. It helped in removing inept rulers, and gave the worthy the opportunity to rule over the people justly. Human sacrifice was dejected among the Zhu, and they also united the Chinese language. Settlers were encouraged by the Zhu government to settle in the Yangtze River Valley, which created the Chinese Middle Kingdom. Frequent nomadic invasions and internal skirmishes among the princes and families left a shaky Zhu dynasty by 500 BCE. Confucianism and other philosophical movements like Taoism helped in lessening the turmoil. The philosophies taught respect of elders, concept of yin and yang, and balance of universe and nature. However, Zhu dynasty crumbled as the nobilities became more powerful and their battles decentralized into the Warring States period from 402 to 201 BCE. Qin Dynasty The leader who finally ousted the Zhu Emperor was Qin Shi Huang. Imperial China was first ruled by the Qin Dynasty from 221 to 207 BCE. Qin eliminated the feudal system and established a bureaucracy which entirely depended on the emperor for powers. Any regional conflicts were immediately crushed, and the borders of China under his rule were extended to northern Vietnam and South China Sea. There was a systematic tax system implemented, standard coinage, standard measurements, national census, regulated buildings of roads, official spoken and written language. Other transformations comprise of start of construction of Great Wall of China to keep away the nomadic invaders, boost for the silk manufacturing business, and irrigation projects. Qin was disreputable for levying heavy taxes, forcing people to construct the Great Wall of China and give harsh punishments to those who did not follow his orders. He discouraged Confucians and upheld legalism, the concept of which was that people were intrinsically evil and could be controlled by force. Legalism was pervaded with realistic, reasonable opinions and banned the pleasures of educated conversation as perky. Qin Dynasty was weakened because of the emperor's unpopular thoughts, and other groups started to fight to take over the throne. Han Dynasty The second dynasty to rule over imperial China, Han soon followed after the Qin Dynasty. The Han Dynasty spread its roots over four centuries, and the period of rule of Han Dynasty was considered to be the golden age for China. Emperor Wu 
of Han Dynasty brought peace to the Kingdom of China and equaled the Pax Romana which was brought about in the Roman Empire in the Mediterranean a century later. The Han Dynasty was formed when two peasants rose against Shi Huang Qin's son, who was weaker in power and control. They kept the bureaucracy and centralization policy of the Qin, but lessened the suppression. They stretched their boundaries into Vietnam, Central Asia, and Korea managed to create an empire larger than what the Qin's had. The Han's advanced trade with the Romans, where they traded different types of goods, silk was the prime product. There were other civilizations that connected through the Silk Road, like India, Europe, and Middle East. Confucianism was promoted by Emperor Wu, and there were many shrines that were dedicated to the religion. The examination system was introduced in the system, which helped in picking intellectuals of extraordinary merit. These bureaucrats were usually people from higher class, but the lower class ensured that they keep a check on this. The administration of Han was extremely structured and directed the agricultural production, judicial law, economy, military, and the lives of normal people. Scientific investigation, scholarly beliefs, and comprehensive past records were also promoted during the reign of the Hans. There were many factors which pummeled the Han dynasty. China was in a state of chaos, and by 100 CE there was much corruption in the bureaucracy. The scholars and bureaucrats neglected their duties, and the landlords took advantage of the situation and started taking control. Neglect in work led to heavy taxation on the peasants, and the Taoists declared to have supernatural powers which could save China. Although a failed one, but the Taoists in 184 managed to weaken the administration. The chaos lasted for about three centuries, and none of the rulers managed to bring peace to the nation. China soon divided into southeastern and northwestern China. In 557, the region was finally controlled by Chen Dynasty rule the south, and northern Zhu Dynasty ruled the north of China. Medieval History In the medieval period, the Eastern Empires sustained and expanded through migration, trade, and subjugations of bordering regions. Gunpowder was extensively used as early as the 11th century, and they were using portable type printing five centuries before Gutenberg formed his press. Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism were the prevailing beliefs of the Far East during the Middle Ages. Marco Polo was not the only Westerner to voyage to the Orient and return with marvelous stories of this diverse nation, but his explanations, printed in the late 13th and 14th centuries, were the first to be extensively read through Europe. Islamic Middle East the Islamic states and Islamic caliphate conquered Central Asia, Caucasus, and Middle East in the 7th century and stretched their kingdom into Malay archipelago and Indian subcontinent. In 500, when medieval age began, Middle East was divided in small states, out of which Byzantine Empire in Turkey and Sassanid Empire in Persia were the only two prominent empires. The deserts of the Arabian Peninsula were ruled by the Bedouins, who were nomads, but their small clans were bound together by affinity. Except for some places near the coast, growth and farming was limited. Medina and Mecca were important cities which were centers for trade between Eurasia and Africa. Early Islamic Empire Muhammad preached the faith of Islam from 613 to 630 in the Arabian desert, ending it in the holy city of Mecca. The tribes were united by him into an Islamic empire who were ruled by a political and religious leader known as the Caliph. They extended their boundaries by taking over the Sassanids and the now modern cities of Egypt, Libya, Persia, and Syria. The Byzantine Empire was seized by the Arabic navy. In order to succeed Muhammad, there were many wars fought, which were known as Ridda Wars, which eventually split Islam into two sects, Shia and Sunni. The Sunni were dominant, and the Umayyad Caliphate was established by them with Damascus as their capital. Jews and Christians were treated respect in their empire because of the teachings of their holy book they shared from the Holy Bible. The women were treated kindly, marriage was encouraged, and it was said that men and women were equal in the eyes of God. 
Abbasid Empire. The Shia and non-Arab Muslims joined a new political group, Abbasids, and in 750, in the Battle of Zab, the Umayyads were overthrown. What remained of Umayyads took refuge in Iberia and independently set an empire, Caliphate of Cordoba. The Abbasids moved their capital to Baghdad in 762. The Wazir was the person who was responsible for most of the administrative and political responsibilities, and complete monarchy was established. They increased their trade by sending missionaries and traders to Southeast Asia and India. Later, the western part of India was conquered by the Abbasids because of some piracy problems with them. Ketub Uddin Abek was a Turkish general who first led the army and in 1206 established the Malmuk Sultanate. Many groups in the court fought for power, and the caliph depended on rich families to take advice and was a puppet in their hands. The Shia administration lasted only for a little more than a hundred years, after which, in 1051, the Turkish established the Seljuk dynasty. The Crusades launched by the Western Europeans lost much control on their lands, while the Muslims were unified under Saladin in the 12th century. The Christians lost all their lands in the territory, and the final crusade fell on 1291. Chinggis Khan led the Mongols and raided the Abbasid Caliphate. Besides, the empire was also attacked by the nomads of Asia. By 1258, Hulagu Khan, who was the grandson of Chinggis Khan, finished what his grandfather began by assassinating the caliph and taking over Baghdad. Although the Mongols retreated, but the caliphate was devastated and later was subjugated by attacks of Timur and a different group of Turks who called themselves Ottomans. The Ottomans were based in Anatolia, and by 1566 they conquered Balkans, most of Africa, most of Egypt, Mesopotamia, Greece, most parts of Arabia, Byzantium, and united them under one Ottoman Empire. The end of post-classical era in Middle East and the Caliphate was marked by the rule of Ottoman sultans. India Period from 600 to 1200 is defined by cultural diversities and provincial empires. Between 606 and 647, Harsha of Kanauj, ruling the Indo-Gangic, tried to expand south, but was stopped by the Deccan Kalukya, and his successor was defeated by the Pala king of Bengal when he tried to expand toward east. The Chakulas were defeated by Pallavas, whereas the Pallavas were defeated by the Cholas and Pandyas from further south. There was no kingdom that was able to establish stability in the lands. The Muslim invasion in the subcontinent of India began in the 12th century, when the Rajput kingdoms in northern India were ascending, even though Multan and Sindh were long taken by the Muslims in the 8th century. Medieval China the dynasties of Song, Tang, Xu, and Huan rose and fell in the post-classical period of China. The era also witnessed the beginning of Neo-Confucianism and the spread of Buddhism. The Chinese also developed in painting and ceramics during the Middle Ages. Some of the magnificent structures which survive the modern times are Tianning Temple in Peking and Great South Gate in Todai, Japan. Sui Dynasty The foundation of Sui Dynasty was laid in 580s when a rich man, Yang Chan, married his daughter to the Northern Zhu Dynasty. He pacified the nomadic armies by abandoning the Confucian academic nobility, after which he declared himself the Emperor Wen of Sui. He led the armies and unified China under the Sui Dynasty. He built granaries, which helped in times of flood, regulate the marketplace, and also lowered the taxes. Wen was murdered by his son, who declared himself Emperor Yang of Xu. Yang revived Confucian intellectuals and bureaucracy, which angered nomadic armies and aristocrats. Yang spent a luxurious life and used China's resources for his personal luxury. His military fails and neglect to look after the kingdom led to his assassination by his ministers in 618, ending the Sui rule. Tang Dynasty. Yang had a minister, Li Wan, who was renowned and intelligent, and was able to sit on the throne after his assassination. 
In 623, he established the Tang Dynasty and declared himself Emperor Gaoxu. Quan expanded his territories to Vietnam in south, Manchuria in north, and Tibet in west. The education system was bettered, and a Ministry of Rights was founded, which controlled the examination system to get qualified and educated scholars for jobs. Emperor Wu showed that China was tolerant to women rulers. With the Taoists and Confucianists around, Buddhism suffered, and with it suffered the state, as the Buddhist monasteries couldn't be taxed, instead sent many gifts and grants. Emperor Xuanzong neglected the government and state affairs, and which led to the decline of the Tang Dynasty. A revolt in 775 left a weak and devastated China. The Tang Dynasty finally saw its end in 907. Song Dynasty China lost much of lands to the nomads of Liao Dynasty during the revolts which happened under the rule of Tang Dynasty. By 960, Song Dynasty reunited most of China, but they had to pay tribute to the wanderers to evade future attacks, which was like inviting the other nomadic kingdoms to suppress them. Confucianism took form of Neo-Confucianism. This put the intellectuals in a position which was superior in comparison to aristocrats and the Buddhists. Women were did not have any say or power, and the notorious practice of foot-binding became prevalent. The Jin Dynasty overthrew the Lao Dynasty in the north and invaded the northern territory of China. In 1126, Song Dynasty fled south and established Southern Song Dynasty. Yuan Dynasty The Western Xia Kingdom was conquered by Mongols in 1227. They soon came upon the Jin Dynasty, and the Chinese townships were inundated by the merciless Mongols. Kublai Khan proclaimed himself the Emperor of China and established the Yuan Dynasty. The Mongols completely controlled China by 1290, who established their capital at Kanbalik, now Beijing. Kublai Khan was not a tolerant leader and discouraged the Mongols to have contacts with the Chinese. He separated the places of worship, living homes, and kept the high positions only for Mongols, which caused the Chinese intellectuals to discontinue the bureaucratic structure. However, he was always captivated by Chinese thoughts and kept himself encircled by Taoists, Chinese Buddhists, and Confucian counselors. Unlike the Chinese women who were always suppressed by men, the Mongolian women were independent and would often ride and go hunting or fight along with the men in the wars. Kublai Khan's wife, Chabi, was a good advisor and constantly advised her husband to be tolerant toward the treatment of Chinese for him to rule them smoothly. This, however, did not impact the position of the Chinese women in the society, and the non-Confucian heirs of Kublai Khan suppressed not only the Chinese, but the Mongolian women too. The 1331 plague of Black Death swallowed the Chinese population, and later emaciated Western Europe too. Japan Japan went through Sinification, or went through the influence of Chinese radical and ethnic philosophies. The reason for Japan's Sinicization was mainly because the leaders of Japan, including the emperor, were greatly captivated by the Chinese bureaucracy. Besides bureaucracy, other things which mesmerized them was Buddhism and Confucianism. The medieval period of Japan also witnessed the old Shinto faith resume its popularity, and Zen Buddhism continued to be popular. The Asuka period marks the beginning of medieval Japan, from 592 to 645. The period saw many social, political, and artistic changes. The Yamato dynasty established their capital in southern Nara area. The Japanese sent their first political mission to China in 600 and catalyzed the process of Chinese culture. The Yamato encouraged Buddhism. There were many Buddhist temples constructed in the rural areas and the towns. Mongol Empire A large part of Asia was conquered by the Mongols in the 13th century, and their lands extended from China to Europe. The medieval Asia was marked by the rule of the Khans. Chinggis Khan was the only person to have controlled so much lands. He built his power uniting the Mongol tribes, and then marched south and west to expand his territories. Kublai Khan was his grandson, and dominated Burma, 
Russia, China, Iran, Eastern Europe, and Middle East. The Mongol armies destroyed nearly one-third Chinese population. The armies of the Khans went as far as Jerusalem, and they finally saw defeat in 1260. Early Modern Period From the 17th century, the Russia started taking control of Asia, and by the 19th century, Siberia and most of Central Asia was under them. From the 16th century, North Africa, Middle East, Balkans, and Anatolia was dominated by the Ottoman Empire. Qing Dynasty was established in China when the Manchu subjugated it in the 17th century. India was controlled by the Mughals in the 16th century and commenced the Second Golden Age for India. China remained to be the biggest economy on the globe, trailed by India till the 18th century. Ming China Xu Xuanzang declared himself the Emperor of China in 1368 and established the Ming Dynasty and called himself Huangwu Emperor. The new emperor and his armies chased the Mongols out of China. Huangshang was always doubtful of the intellectuals who controlled the Chinese bureaucracy, as he was a peasant and was not educated. Confucian scholars were required in the administration, but the examination system was made much arduous and cheating was tremendously cut down. The scholars who outshined everyone else were valued highly. He also directed powers to the emperor and tried to end the corruption among the bureaucrats. Society and Economy Since Huan Shang was himself a peasant, earlier he was sympathetic to the commoners. He erected many irrigation systems and other communal plans to help the peasants. The labor demands were lessened, and the farmers were permitted to claim and cultivate vacant lands without paying any taxes. This, however, did not stop the property owners to gain privileges from the management, and they gradually gained control over the farmers. Moneylenders practiced foreclosure of debts of the farmers in exchange for mortgages, forcing them to become the occupants of landholders or to go somewhere else in search of work. Neo-Confucianism strengthened its roots and practiced superiority of teachers over students, men over women, elders over youth, resulting in discrimination of the inferior classes. The rule of Ming's saw growth in the field of art as the techniques of painting were bettered in brush painting. The paintings normally depicted beautiful mountains, swamplands, lakes, travelers, court scenes, country life, and city life. Some of the best classic novels were written during this time, like the Jinping Mei, Walter Margin, and Journey to the West. Ming's rule saw a boom in the economics of China. American crops were introduced to the farm, and peanuts, sweet potatoes, and maize could be cultivated, even in unproductive lands. This helped to prevent famine. The population of China increased rapidly, and from 80 to 90 million, it went up to 150 million in a matter of three centuries. This helped in equaling the economy of the market. Ceramics, tea, silk, and lacquer was produced by the artificers, which was traded in with the Asians and Europeans. Westerners carried out trade in the port towns of Canton and Macau. The wealth earned by the merchants through these trades was used to buy lands. The riches were not used to develop the economy of China. Foreign Interests The Chinese set sail junk ships on the Indian Ocean and South China Sea. Yongli Emperor appointed Sheng He, a eunuch from China, to lead such expeditions from 1403 to 1433. These junks carried goods, soldiers, animals for zoos, and traveled to Southern Arabia, East Africa, and Southeast Asia to show off their supremacy. They were more powerful than the Europeans, and the economy of the globe would be a complete different one if their expeditions had not stopped. The Chinese administration finally thought of these expeditions to be a waste of money and stopped in 1433. The navy dismantled and began to participate in the military reforms and returned to defending China from the nomads. Chinese left the water route open for the Europeans, who arrived on their east coast, and the Jesuit missionaries were the first to set foot on land, and they started converting the upper class of people to Christianity. 
To get the support of the locals, the Jesuits learned their native language, customs, and wore Chinese dress. Famous Jesuit scholars like Adam Schall and Matteo Ricci astonished the Chinese scholars with technical advances like cannons, clocks, improved calendars, and exact prediction of eclipses. While some of the scholars converted most of them, disliked the Jesuits and called them barbarians, a handful of Jesuit scholars endured at the court to amaze the emperor and his advisors. Decline The highly centralized government started to fall by the 1500s as inept rulers succeeded the throne. With the rulers, there were many unethical officials who tried to gain from the situation. The public projects crumbled, and neglect of the administration led to famine, floods, and drought. The peasants were forced to sell children, while the rich took advantage of the situation and built large estates and exploited the poor to work on the estates. China was on its way to decline again. The traditional Chinese and Japanese pirates started their raids on southern coast by middle of the 16th century, and the military failed to stop them. The Manchu were gaining power and were united by Nurhachi under the Eight Banners. Although Manchu adopted much of Chinese cultures, it was a Chinese vassal, Emperor Chongzhen, who was the 16th and the last emperor, failed to stop a rebellion in 1644, and the enemies invaded the Forbidden City. He hanged himself in the imperial gardens, after which Shun Dynasty was in power for some time. A loyal Ming official took the help of Manchus and destroyed the Shun Dynasty within a year. Manchus took this opportunity and captured the capital, Beijing. The Manchus established their reign and Qing Dynasty after two centuries. Late Modern Period Qing China China was under foreign control once more. Manchus established the Qing Dynasty by 1644. The emperors of the Qing Dynasty were conventional and continued the Confucian philosophies and bureaucracy with the scholars. The economy saw a few changes, and there were attempts made to solve other problems of the society. The trade with the Westerners was increased, and silk, porcelain, and tea were exchanged for silver. The merchants progressed, and the already prevailing roadways, canal, irrigation works, and dikes were repaired. These measures were amalgamated with lowered taxes and helped in soothing the turbulence among the peasant class. The Qing dynasty failed to regulate the landlords, who exploited the farmers and the lower class. Problems rose internally and externally by the 18th century, in economy, politics, and society. Cheating and bribery found their way into the exam system, which opened the doors for incompetent and inexperienced scholars in the bureaucracy, which caused disorder in the projects, military, and the peasantry. Poverty gave rise to theft and banditry, especially in the rural areas, and migrations started happening throughout China when people started looking for work. The government failed to resolve the problems. Opium War When the Europeans started trading with China, the latter hardly valued the products of the Europeans, whereas the Europeans had great demands for the Chinese goods like silk, tea, and porcelain. The Europeans balanced this disparity by selling opium to the Chinese. Not only did this opium eat into the reserves of the Chinese, but spread among all the bureaucrats and society, making most of China addicts of this drug. In 1729, Emperor Yongsheng put a ban on opium, but with little efforts, and later in 19th century, Emperor Dao Guang took grave steps to stop opium from eating into the Chinese society. One of the important officials who were given this responsibility was Leng Shishu. In 1839, more than 20,000 chests of opium was destroyed by Lin. The Europeans responded by asking for compensation, and when it was not paid, they declared war on China. This is the first opium war, and China was no match against the Europeans. Yangtze River was constantly invaded by British, and the emperor had to make peace which also resulted in the exile of Lin. The Treaty of Nanking was formed in which the British gave up control of Hong Kong and gates for trade with other European countries like Germany, USA, and France were opened. 
Contemporary History The Europeans controlled most of Asia by the 20th century, like the Spanish East Indies, French Indochina, British India, Goa, and Portuguese Macau. Russia and Britain battled to control the Central Asian area in the 19th century. By 1916, the Trans-Siberian Railway was completed, using which Asia could be crossed. Persia, China, and Thailand were free from the European control. Imperial Japan stretched into Southeast Asia and China during the Second World War. Most of the Asian countries became free from European clutches after the Second World War. Central Asia saw many independent nations when Russia collapsed in 1991. Kings, emperors, landlords, and aristocrats, the Asia has seen many changes. Dynasties and kingdoms rose and fell, giving rise to thousands of beliefs and traditions, mix of cultures, of which some were good, while the others were intolerable. The Asian nations have their own independent governments now, who work peacefully and have become important powers on the globe.